Good afternoon, everyone. For anyone that did not attend last week's session, my name is Amanda Mosley, and I am the tax specialist here at Tumpwork Software. Today, we're going to be going over uh, the requirements of 2013's Form W-2. So we're just going to jump right in here. Our objectives today are the W-2 box calculations, mailing addresses, due dates, the AccuWage software, box 12 codes, code DD requirements, how to produce W-2s out of TempWorks, and report balancing. I will be using some abbreviations throughout the slideshow. Be aware that employee is going to be referred to as EE, employer as ER, federal income tax as FIT, state income tax as SIT, and social security as SS. So as you see those abbreviations, just be aware of what they stand for. Okay, our earning boxes. Box one is wages, tips, and compensation that is federal income tax taxable. That is made up of jurises USS and USM. This will include all compensation, including taxable fringe benefits. Your calculation is gross earnings plus any applicable fringe benefits that aren't already included in gross, of course, uh, minus retirement plans if they're FIT exempt, so it's going to be like your 401k, for example, minus any Section 125 contributions the employees made. Box 3, Social Security Taxable Wages and Compensation, that's Juris E. FICA, up until the wage base limit, which is $113,700 for 2013. Box 3 will not include any tips or any Section 125 contributions. Box 5 is Medicare Taxable Wages and Compensation, excluding Section 125 contributions. Notice that it's EMED and EMED SUP wages. The 941 requires EMED and EMED SEP to be broken out as two separate jurisdictions. However, the W-2 requires them to be summed together in Box 5. Box 7 is your Social Security tips. Uh, box 3 and Box 7 summed together should not cross the threshold of $113,700. Box 16 is wages, tips, and compensation that is state income tax taxable. This will include all compensation, including the taxable fringe benefits. This is a great visual of um, just the anatomy of a W-2 statement. I know this is a lot of information on one page. I'll give you a second to take a look. And then I'm also going to be sending this out uh, as an attachment when I send the follow-up email after this webinar. Uh, notice here that the picture is of a 2012 W-2. Uh, don't be alarmed about that. There is nothing published that um, the IRS or Social Security Administration is requesting as changes from these W-2 requirements to the current year W-2 requirements. So everything should look exactly the same with the exception of 2013 on your W-2s and uh, this one says 2010. Everything else should be the same as far as requirements and boxes. All right. When, where, and how to file W-2s. Copy A is to the Social Security Administration. Copy B uh, should be given to the employee for them to file their 1040, and that should go with their federal income tax. Copy C is for the employee's records. Copy D is for your records. Copy 1 should go to the state, city, or local. And copy 2 is for the employee's state, city, or local. Uh, just a remi reminder that TempWorks offers W-2 printing and mailing services. Contact your account manager for details. We do have an entire team of 
specialists that are going to be working on all of the W-2 printing, packaging, and mailing so that we can help you get them to your employees uh, by the due date, which we can jump right here. The due date is January 31st. So those are due to your employees, whether they are postmarked by that date, whether they are handed to the employee by that date, or whether you electronically get them their W-2s by that date. They are required to all employees by January 31st. Uh, if you are filing by paper, here is the address to the Social Security Administration. It's due on February 28th. You can file by paper if you have under 250 W-2s. If you are e-filing by Meg Media, they are due March 31st. Here's a link to the AccuH software. We'll go over that in just a moment. Here are your state due dates for your state W-2s. Here's a link here if you'd like to see the website. Here's all of the information um, of when each state requires their uh, state W-2s to be received by. If there's no distinction, Georgia, for example, uh, that is 1099s and W-2s are due by that date. Some states do break them out by having the um, 1099s and W-2s due at different times. Feel free to reference this for uh, your convenience here. AccuAge is a free software provided by the Social Security Administration that allows you to test your wage report to ensure a smooth W-2 processing and submitting. It's going to help you identify your most common formatting mistakes, verify that it's in the SSA required format, the EFW-2, uh, and it's also going to just kind of scan through your data and it's not going to know if your wages are incorrect, but if something is out of the ordinary and a red flag, it will give you a, an error message. You can run this software as many times as you need to run these checks, um, as many times as you need to get the errors corrected. So here is again a link to the Social Security software, socialsecurity.gov slash employer slash AccuH. All right, box 12. Box 12 is designed for deferred comp and other compensation. Each W-2 has enough room for four codes. However, if you need more space, you will need additional W-2s. I'm not going to go through each one of these codes. There's quite a few. Um, kind of some of the main ones are code C is a taxable benefit for your group term life over $50,000. Anything over this amount is now taxable and should be already included in boxes 1, 3, and 5. Code D is for the employee's contributions to 401k. Code J is non-taxable third-party sick pay. Uh, if you paid your employee moving expenses, that's going to be code P. Uh, adoption benefits, code T. We're going to have our Roth contributions down here in AA. A DD is the big one this year. It's the cost for non-taxable health insurance provided through an employer. We're going to go over that in just a second. Here we go. This is a great link here. It's directly to the IRS where they list their reporting requirements. So feel free to click on that link or jot that down and take a look at that when you're ready. Here is what you are required to report. Your major medical, your FSA, in excess of the employee's contributions, anything that is pre-tax or paid by the employer, your EAP, if the employer requires COBRA premium, on-site medical cl clinics, if they require a COBRA premium, wellness programs, if they require a COBRA premium, and the domestic partner coverage, which is included in gross income. All right, 
and just a continuation, this is your optional reporting. This is not required, but you can certainly report it should you choose to. Dental and vision that is not integrated into another medical or health plan. Dental or vision, which gives the employee the choice of declining or electing and paying, paying the additional premium. HRA contributions, multi-employer plans, self-funded plans not subject to federal COBRA. Uh, here's a couple other uh, optional situations. The employer is not required, however they may file and report code DD. You are required to file, but you have the option of reporting code DD if you have 250 W-2s that you filed last year. So if in 2012 you filed 249 W-2s, you are not required by law to file code DD this year. You do not have to report your W-2s, your, your code DD on the W-2s furnished to employees who terminate mid-year and requested in writing their W-2 early. So on those W-2s that were requested in July, you do not have to compute your medical premiums and get them on those early W-2s. W-2s provided by third-party sick pay providers to the employees of other employers. So this is probably not applicable to us. This is for um, your third-party sick pay providers. They do not have to reach out to you, the employer, to put your third-party sick pay on the W-2s they're sending to your employees. Do not report. So these are. this is not a continuation of the last page. This is not optional. This is the IRS is saying do not report your uh, FSAs funded by employee contributions only, your HSAs, employer or employee contributions, your MSA contributions, again employer or employee, anything paid by after-tax contributions, the government plans provided to military and their family members, accident or disability income, long-term care, liability and supplemental liability, workers' comp, auto medical payment insurance, and 2% 2% S-corp insurance. Also, uh, code DD is not required on the W-3, so you put code DD on all of your employees' W-2s, but you do not need to sum them up and put them on your W-3 if you were to submit via paper. The W-2Cs are corrected W-2s. You do not need to issue a W-2C for a corrected address or reissuing a lost W-2, only for changes in wages, withholding, or social security number. If there are minor name changes, um, for example, you just transpose two letters, they do not want to see a W-2C. If you had the employee's name completely wrong and the, IR, the Social Security Administration um, already has a new Social Security card with a new last name, you will be required to file a new w, uh, W-2C, for example, if the employee got married and you gave them a, a W-2 with their maiden last name and the SSA has their married last name, that would require a W-2C. If you missed an A at the end of Amanda, for example, they do not want to see a W-2C for that. Uh, retain undeliverable W-2s and W-2Cs for four years. Uh, as far as applied for and missing social security numbers, if you're filing on paper, you can enter applied for. If you're filing electronically, enter all zeros. They do require that you file a W-2C upon receiving the social security number though. WCs, I'm sorry, W3s. A W3 is a total summary of all W2 forms. It is used to reconcile your W2 wages with the total of your 941s. A W3 is not required if you complete your W2s electronically via the EFW2 because that system will automatically generate a summary of all of your W2s. 
If you're filing by paper, remit a W-3 along with the paper copy A's of each W-2. Alright, and now we're going to go over how to get your W-2s out of TempWorks. So, um, you would go Pay Bill, and then Other is on the screen before this, it's the bottom option. So we'll bring you to Year End. Then you're going to go Print, right here. And I had a question earlier about um, how to get T4s for our Canadian customers. Right below, same option, you would just hit print under T4. Uh, T4 summary is not here yet. T4 summary will be available right under W3 very soon here. So now I'm just going to hit print. And this screen is going to pop up and allow me to sort and filter. So I can choose if I want all employees or if I just want um, my active employees. I can filter by state. Over here I can sort by state, branch, or employee name. This is going to uh, include or exclude the employees that opted for electronic W-2s. And this option here is going to print either one W-2 or two W-2s, depending on my choice, uh, if an employee worked in multiple states or multiple localities. Alright, and this is the part I'm very excited about. This should make life a little bit easier for you guys. We have a couple new reports this year. New W-2 Balancing Report and Adjustment Taxability Report. Um, and they're going to really help bridge um, some of the reports you use weekly to your W-2s. So for example, the payroll journal shows your gross wages, your total taxes, and total deductions. However, it doesn't really break it out by the pre-tax and it doesn't really show you how we got the figure that's in boxes 1, 3, and 5 on the W-2. Note this wage balancing report is only for federal, so it's not going to break down how we got um, box 16. Uh, it's going to show you the gross, pre-tax deductions, amount taxable, and tax withheld. So it's really going to walk you through gross minus 401k in section 125 equals amount taxable for federal income tax, and then also show you the federal income tax withheld. So it's really going to walk you through how we got boxes two, or I'm sorry, boxes um, one and two on the W-2. And it's going to do the same for one, three, and five, and then of course two, four, and six for the Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax. Adjustment taxability is going to show each adjustment and which jurisdictions it's ex exempt from. So last week we talked about this report a little bit um, in the data integrity check where it prompted you to review the adjustment taxability. I directed you to go to this report here and it's going to list every adjustment and everything that it's exempt from. Uh, if you do not have these two reports yet, just be patient. They are rolling out in phases. So if you don't have it yet, you will have it before the end of the year. I've got a couple pictures of what the report looks like. This is the W-2 balancing report. This is just a snapshot. Um, most of the employees in my test database did not have anything pre-tax, so I apologize about that. But Susie here did have uh, $50 year-to-date in a 401k. So you can see that this is my gross minus my pre-tax. This is the amount here, my amount taxable, that's going to be in box one. And this is what's going to be in box two that she was uh, deducted for income tax. It's going to do the same thing if Susie had had um, medical insurance deducted. It would show her amount in medical and then less that amount would be amount taxable. Here's the pre-tax adjustment, just a small snip of what this report looks like. It shows me 401k is my adjustment number one, and then it's going to list every juris separately that is exempt from 401k, or exempt from taxability. For example, here is Susie's uh, 401k that is exempt from medical, that $50 that we saw that was deducted from gross is because it is federal income tax exempt. If it's on this report, it is exempt from this jurisdiction here. Uh, 
so again, this is really going to help tie out the differences between gross and amount taxable. Um, I get a lot of questions at the end of the year of why does my uh, figures on my W-2 not balance what's on my check stub. Well, they're likely looking at gross and it doesn't match because they had some pre-tax things. So this should be really helpful to you. And uh, that is actually all I have for today's session. It was a quick one. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me at yearend dot at yearend at tempworks.com. And uh, myself or a year-end technician will get back to you right away. Again, that's yearend at tempworks.com. And I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you again on Monday. Thank you.